What is going on guys, Pat on the shop, and tonight we're talking about thrust bearings on the small block Chevy, crankshaft end play, what's the deal, how do you adjust it, let's check it out. So as I was getting the bottom end together for the YouTube block, uh, I was putting everything together and I realized I forgot to film about thrust bearing because I actually had to adjust the thrust bearing on the YouTube block. Uh, and someone emailed me and asked me about thrust bearing clearance. So the, so basically what thrust bearing is on a small block Chevy, it's the rearmost bearing. And if you look at the rear bearing, oh, almost lost you there. This is just a spare one I have. Um, you'll notice this bearing has this surface on each uh, side of it. Uh, LS and a lot of Fords and stuff will have the thrust bearing in the middle, but on the small block Chevys and big block Chevys, it's at the back like this. So what this surface actually is, is for the forward and backward mo uh, movement of the rearward mo movement of the crankshaft. So when the crank is being pushed forward, say with the torque converter or with a clutch, uh, you're pushing on the clutch, the crank is actually being pushed forward, this bearing surface here against the crankshaft is what takes that load. Uh, so there is an adjustment on how much play there needs to be in that forward and rearward mo uh, movement. Uh, and it has to be checked and I'll show you how to adjust it if it's out. So you don't need a fancy dial indicator to, to check this. Uh, I have a dial indicator set up on this one, but I'll show you uh, what you can actually do with just simple feeler blades and get really accurate results. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys just this is the way they do it. Not everyone has the feeler blade with the, or the, sorry, the dial gauge with the base. So a feeler blade works just fine. Um, a, on a small block Chevy, you want to see anywhere from 3 to 11 thou from pushed all the way back to all the way forward. Uh, and this is typically something you check before the rods are all installed. As you can see on this engine, it's together. It's is already set and this is good to go. I'm just doing this as an example. You don't want to have all this together and then check your thrust bearing because if it's out, it's going to be more of a pain for it to, to adjust for you. Um, so let's let's go over how we're gonna check this. So we're gonna pretend like we don't have any other rods installed and uh, pistons and all that stuff. Uh, and we've already checked main bearing clearance and, and all that stuff and everything's good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna just have you can have just the front cap on if you want and then have the other bearing shells in there so the crank sitting where it's supposed to be. The rear bearing uh, cap you're gonna want to torque to about 20 foot towns. Uh, just so it's snug and then you want to what you want to do is you want to tap the crank forward just like that with a rubber mallet and you want to tap the crank backwards just like that with a rubber mallet that just makes sure that the, the shells are aligned uh, like the two bearing shells are, are sitting somewhat together for when you're checking clearance so right in here is this bearing surface right like that if you were to look this shell right here, this this surface is right there. Well, the top one, if you wanna look at it like that. So that surface is right there. So that's where we're gonna actually check. So you're gonna get your feeler blades out, and the spec is three, on a small block Chevy, three to 11 thou. So what you wanna do is you're gonna, you're gonna take a screwdriver right in this area between the main cap and the crank, and you're just gonna pry it forward Gently, and you should hear, you could probably hear, I don't know if you can get, pick it up on camera, but there is that little bit of movement of the crank going forward. So then you're gonna, you can simply do the go, no go method where you take uh, the tightest spec, which is three thou. We're gonna take a three thou feeler blade and put it in between the crank and the bearing surface right there. See how we can slide it in? So we know we have our minimum clearance and we can take our maximum clearance of 11 thou and it doesn't fit. So we know we're within spec. And then if you really wanted to, you could figure out exactly what you have. I know on this one, I have a uh, four thou. So there's the four thou feeler blade. Let's see how it goes right in and it's just a, a little bit of resistance. So it's probably more like four and a half thou right in between there. So that's perfect. So that means the play that we have with the crank moving from all the way back to all the way forward, like that is four and a half thou. That's perfect. All right, so what do you do if there's not enough clearance? You go to take your uh, three thousandths of an inch feeler blade. You take your feeler blade 
and it doesn't fit, what do you do? Well, it's quite simple actually. It's called lapping the rear bearing, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna do that. There's a few things you're gonna need. First and foremost, you're gonna need a really flat working surface. This is uh, this table is extremely flat. Uh, if you don't have that, a thick piece of flat metal, or even a piece of glass will work, work really well because you're gonna need it for a sanding surface uh, for your rear bearing. The second thing you're gonna need is some wet dry sandpaper. This is 320 grit, so 320 to say 400 grit. And then you're gonna want some fine sandpaper. Uh, I don't unfortunately have a bigger sheet of this, so I normally will like a full size sheet of like 800 to 1000 grit to finish the surface when you're done. This will do majority of the work and then you're just gonna polish it up with that. Um, you're gonna need a gear clamp that's big enough to go around the bearing to hold it all together. Uh, some WD-40 some brake clean or rubbing alcohol or something to clean the bearing up after. Brake clean works really well. And vernier caliper to measure how much you're taking off. So you want to put the bearing shells together uh, as if they're as they sit in the block. Uh, so that it sits like this because you want to know what the front and the back are. So make sure uh, when you put them together that they are indexed the way they would be in the block. So the idea is um, you're going to remove material from this face, but you don't want to uh, re like. Ideally, you don't want to remove the material from the back because the back of the thrust bearing will actually take the most wear because the crank is being pushed forward against the surface and not so much backwards on the front thrust surface. So typically you want to leave the back as thick as possible and take from the front surface. Totally up to you. You can take a little bit from each side, but um, ideally you want to leave the back alone and that's why you mark which side is the back so you know you're taking you're only going to be sanding the front. So we're going to be wet sanding this so we'll uh, we'll spray some WD-40 down and then you're going to want to take your verniers and measure the flange thickness. So you might find it's a little bit different at the mating surface, but you want to find the thickest point. It's about 92 thou is the, is the thickest point. Yeah, maybe so we only had two thou um, clearance before for the thrust surface. We want to get to five, so we're going to have to take three thou off the back of this. So once we got our uh, measurement to where we want it, we have three thou removed. This might take you all of five minutes to do. Keep checking um, because you'll find it, it comes off pretty quick. And then you finish the bearing surface with the 800 grit, wet sand it again with your WD-40. Just until you have a nice smooth surface. So now that you got your bearing, Surface all lapped and everything cleaned up, brake clean, wiped down. Make sure you clean all that muck and guck off there. Uh, you can go ahead and reinstall this bearing and recheck it the same. Torque the rear main cap down to 20, hit it back and forth, and then recheck that clearance again. Uh, and it should be bang on. If you followed that steps and measured properly that flange surface with the, the vernier and made sure, and then, and then once you get everything in and torque down and the crank fully with all the bearings, just go ahead and make sure you check that again. Let's talk about if you have too much crankshaft in place, so you, you go to put the crank forward, you can slide bigger than a uh, 11 thou feeler blade in between. Um, there's a couple options for that. First of all, make sure you really check out what's going on, because typically if there's 
too much clearance, there's something funky going on with either the bearings or the, you, oftentimes the crankshaft is worn uh, to the point where it's not usable or has to be repaired. Um, but what they do make for, for crankshaft that have been ground, if the thrust surface has been ground, they make bearings, uh, Clevite makes them, um, uh, probably a few other guys, where this surface is actually thicker to come up to make up for that. And then if it's obviously too thick and you can't get a crank in, you can lap lap it in to you know, take more, but do the same process as we just showed to get it in. So it's a little bit more complicated if you have too much um, crankshaft and play, um, but typically what you'll find is that it, you're usually gonna be on the tighter side. I, I've had is more issues with having to add clearance rather than take it up with too much clearance. So there are options, like I said, get the, the crank being repaired or replaced or uh, you have to go to a thicker flange bearing. But if you have too much, make sure you really take a look and see what's going on with the with the bearings there uh, and uh, really do some in investigative reporting because too much is not is a sign of something's worn out. So there you go guys, thrust bearings, crankshaft, end play, easy peasy stuff, but a lot of guys overlook it. So make sure you check it if you're doing your engine over, if you're doing a check on your engine, Pry that crankshaft forward and backwards. You don't need a dial indicator. You can just use a set of feeler blades. Everyone should have a set of feeler blades in their toolbox. Uh, and you can just check it real quick like that. You'll know right away when you go to pry your crank forward and back. If it moves like crazy, then you know something's up. Um, but it's, it's like I said, it's one of those things a lot of guys don't check that are doing first time rebuilds and you really should because this is something you'll have to tear the whole engine apart if it's too tight and you're gonna have issues and obviously too loose is not good either. Uh, so it's just that simple, lapping it in, getting everything where it should be. Uh, please follow me on Instagram if you guys uh, are following me on Instagram at Piss Cutter Performance. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, look out for the next video when we're picking the heads for our YouTube small block Chevy. Thanks guys.